Okay, a uh, quick video today. I'm going to show you guys what I'm going to do. I'm going to reseal this transfer case. And there's basically just three seals I'm putting in. I'm not tearing the whole thing apart because it works fine. But we're going to put these three seals in. I'm going to show you a couple cool things on that. What I like to do and put this transfer case back in the truck. And we're going to have it running today. So stick around and uh, let's do this. Okay, moving along here, we got this uh, <clears throat> 4407 transfer case out of this Ford F-250. We're going to be changing the, uh, the front output seal, the uh, transfer case input seal, and then the uh, output seal here. The transfer case is working fine, so I'm not too worried about it. They generally either work or they don't. So we're going to put this thing back in after I reseal it. Uh, one note I would like to talk about is this front input seal. This is from the transmission output, goes to the uh, input of the transfer case. And anytime you have a transmission out, a four-wheel drive, you should change this input seal for sure. Because if it goes bad, a lot of times the transmission fluid will leak past that seal and fill the transfer case too full. And then the transmission will go low on fluid, won't be leaking anywhere, it'll just be filling up your transfer case, your transmission runs low on fluid, and then you burn up your transmission just because of that one seal. So anytime I have a four wheel drive transfer case out, I change that seal for that reason, no matter what. This one's, uh, that lip there is still pretty flimsy, but we're changing it anyway. Okay, moving along here, just a couple things I wanna show about getting these seals out. I got everything, out prepped ready to go whenever you use a hook tool when you go in and get that seal you want to be very careful not to just put a big old gouge in your case well that's a uh, axle seals on transmissions whatever you want to stay between the seal and the case with your tool when you pry it out and you're always going to have a tiny mark where you were prying against and all I do is take, you can see I got a little nick right there. And all I did was file that chamfer back on there so when I put my new rubber seal in, it doesn't rip the seal. So pretty simple, but it's that important. And then I just uh, 320 sandpaper, made sure this uh, surface right here was nice and clean so that that new rubber seal would just go right in, nice and easy. And then on this input seal, you can't really get to it. So what I do is I take my, just take a screwdriver and get between the input shaft itself and the housing and then just pry it out. That way I'm not nicking up the shaft or the housing of the transfer case. And this goes for all, any kind of automatic transmission, uh, front wheel drive seal or anything like that. Same procedure. And then I just 600 my shaft, nothing rougher than that. You just do 600 or uh, finer sandpaper, make sure the seal surface is good. And uh, we're just moving on here. Everything's looking pretty good. Okay. Uh, we're basically prepped and ready to get this thing back, sealed up tight. And uh, just a couple things. We've got our simple seal kit. And these yokes are ready to go. If you look, I sanded the shaft with 600 sandpaper on both of them, cleaned them up. Everything looked perfect with these. And we got our nuts. Nothing crazy there. Pretty simple. Okay, two things before I put these seals in. One is anytime you're putting a lip seal in, it has a wire retainer there. You got to put some kind of, uh, I use trans gel, you can use Vaseline. So when you're driving that seal in, you do not pop that spring off. Stupid important, but it's got, you got to do it every time. So we're going to do that. And then the most important thing, the easiest way I've found to put these seals in is once you get your, uh, your, uh, trans gel in there for the spring you take and just all you have to do is just spit on the seal it's that simple that's the best way i've been doing this for 30 years and uh 
That's always been the easiest and best way to put these seals in without tearing the actual rubber part of it. So do that and uh, we're gonna drive these seals home. Okay, one thing about these tight yokes, you got uh, the spline yoke there. The splines spline into this here. And if you don't have seal, a seal or sealer to seal those splines, you will get a leak past that bolt. And it'll seem like your seal's leaking, but it's actually the spline. So what I normally do, here is the actual seal that goes down in there once the yoke is on. But what I do is I put a little bit up. I'm putting an ultra black on here at the top of the splines, just a little bit at the top. So when I put this thing down on here, just like that, nice and easy, you can see where that sealer is going to help this rubber seal seal the end of those splines so there's no leak in there, no chance of leaking. And all we're gonna do is put this rubber seal down in there, get it seated all the way down, and then Loctite, my 240, uh, Loctite with 242 Loctite, run this thing home and this thing is good to go. Going in the truck. And it's basically ready to go back in the truck. One thing I did with these seals, I just took an old bearing race, got thousands of them hanging around, but. That's what I use to drive these seals in. That way they go in as straight as possible. So pretty simple, but that important. And you can see with this linkage here, pretty rusty. I'm gonna clean that up, put anti-seize on it. And this is the old bushing. That thing is done. And we got nice new bushings. So we're doing that. And another thing, this is the Transfer case uh, four-wheel drive indicator switch. That's what turns the light on on your dash. So if you're in four-wheel drive and it's not showing the light on the dash, this uh, a lot of times these little uh, balls here get stuck in or you're having a problem with the actual switch inside itself or the wiring, but it's that simple, no big deal. So we're gonna put that back in. I didn't. I took this out when I pulled the transfer case so I didn't bust this switch. So we're good to go there. This thing's ready to go in and this truck is running today.